This video is sponsored by Frame.io. Welcome, my name is Avery Peck. Now, as popular as LUTs are, there's a lot of confusing and conflicting information out there about how they should best be used in a typical coloring workflow. So I figured it's about time we put some of that confusion to rest. Today in part one, we'll be looking at technical LUTs, specifically log to rec 709 conversion LUTs. So let's jump in. The first big question is, what's the best method for applying a LUT in general? It's a really simple question, but there are some easy mistakes that you want to avoid. So let me go ahead and reset this grade here. Now the initial temptation is to simply go to your first node here and apply your LUT like normal. So we'd right click, go to 3D LUT, Blackmagic Design, and apply our LUT. Now everything looks good on the surface, but there is one small problem. If I look closely at these highlights, I can see some of these areas are beginning to clip. No worries, I'll just add a node and we'll bring some of those highlights back. Well, right away, you see a big problem. That information is now permanently clipped. So how do we get around this? Well, the easiest way is to apply a node before the LUT. I'm doing that using Shift S. And what we can do is bring back our highlights in the pre-LUT node before the LUT is applied. So now if I go to this very first node and I bring my gain back, now you can see all of that information is retained and the scopes confirm it. Any information that gets clipped when a LUT is applied cannot be brought back after the LUT. So that's why it's standard practice whenever you apply a LUT to make two nodes and apply your LUT in the second, just like that. So you always have one node before to retain any information that gets clipped. Now that we know how to apply a LUT, let's talk about when we apply them. Now there are two general groups of thought on this. Some people like to apply their conversion LUTs at the beginning of the workflow, and others like to apply them at the end of their workflow. So let's try both strategies and see which one works the best. Personally, I see more people apply at the end of the workflow, so let's try that first. I'll hit Alt S to make a new node, and I'll drag it over here. And then I'll apply my LUT like normal. There we go. And now we'll start color correcting from this first node here. So I like to always balance my luminance first. I'll bring my gain up just a little bit and I'll bring my lift down ever so slightly. I'll make a second node and I'll take care of our color cast problems. So the image is a bit warm, I'll cool it off. And the image also has a little bit of a green tint to it. So I can use the tint slider, bring that up. Now, as you can see, as I bring some of the green tint out of the image, her skin is starting to look fairly pink. So I'll add a new node, come over to the qualifier, and I wanna just qualify her skin to bring some of that pink color out. So I'll uh, hit Shift H so we can see our selection, and I'll try and qualify her skin here. Now you notice right away, no matter where I select the skin, it's very difficult to isolate the skin from the rest of the background. And there's pretty much no way that we're gonna get a very clean qualification doing it this way. If I try and add a correction here, you can see that our corrections are affecting a large portion of the image. Why is this happening? Well, even though we're converting our image to Rec. 7 to 9 at the end, all of the other nodes leading up to that are still in log. And the problem is that many of Resolve's tools are not really designed to work on log images, including the qualifier. You may also notice that your versus curves will struggle and even your primary wheels and primary bars won't be correctly mapped to your image's gamma and color space. So overall, the main advantage of applying your LUT at the end is that you don't have to worry about clipping because all of our corrections are being made before the LUT is applied. But obviously the main disadvantage is you're gonna be stuck working in your camera's proprietary color space. And on top of that, if you're working with two different cameras that are shooting in two different color spaces, now your job as a colorist becomes quite a bit more difficult. So let's try this the other way around. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these corrections and we'll try to apply the LUT at the very beginning. Because we're applying the LUT at the beginning, we need some kind of way to bring back any information that might be clipped by the LUT. So we'll go ahead as is standard practice and we'll add one node before that LUT. So now let's go through the rest of the workflow. I'll go ahead and balance my luminance first, just like before. I'll add another node and balance my color. Okay, 
Obviously, we're getting those same pinkish skin tones. So add a final node here. Come over here to the qualifier, hit Shift H, and we'll begin to select our skin tones. And you can see right away, the qualifier is having a much easier time picking up on her skin. So now we can go ahead and just kind of refine this a little bit. So now, if we come back to the normal view, now if we make a correction, you can see we're getting a much cleaner qualification on the skin. So clearly you can see that in a case like this, when we're applying a log to Rec 709 LUT, it's better to apply that LUT at the beginning of your workflow rather than the end. You just need to make absolutely sure that you have at least one pre-LUT node here to bring back any clipping information. Now with the basic workflow established, let me give you a little bit more of the technical terminology behind what we're doing. Any LUT that's applied at the beginning of the workflow is called an input LUT. And typically this is used to take your input color space, which is the color space that your footage was shot in, and convert that into your working color space, which is the color space that you prefer to grade in. A LUT that's applied at the very end is called an output LUT, and these can sometimes be used to take your working color space and convert that into your output or delivery color space. So let's say you want to be working in Rec. 709, but you want to deliver your project in something else, maybe P3. You can also use output LUTs for different things like film print emulation, or in this case, I have an output LUT that's giving me broadcast safe values. So if I turn this LUT on and off and we look at the scopes, you can see that with the LUT off, I have some illegal shadows. And by illegal, I mean that these shadows would not be suitable for broadcast television. But if I toggle this LUT on, you can see the LUT is basically clipping any values that are not suitable for broadcast. Now, the reason I'm using this as an example is to make a point that whenever you work with an output LUT, you want to make sure it's the very last node in your chain. And that's because if I add a correction after this, and let's say take down my shadows, now I'm basically undoing the work of this LUT. So anytime you work with an output LUT, whether it's a color space conversion LUT or a film print emulation LUT, you need to make sure that it's the very last operation in your node chain. Now, I want to give a big thanks to Frame.io for sponsoring this video. Frame.io is a video sharing and collaboration platform designed specifically for filmmakers. Just upload your assets, receive real-time feedback directly on your videos, then import that feedback straight into your editing timeline. No need to dig through endless email chains or worry about which revisions are most recent. Now you can just get to work and let the platform take care of the rest. If you'd like to try Frame.io, follow the link in the description and sign up for their pro plan, where they'll give you the first 30 days of that plan absolutely free. Frame.io is video collaboration solved. So that's part one of LUTs Demystified, and in part two, we're gonna cover creative LUTs. Thanks again for watching. My name is Avery Peck, and I'll see you all next time. Yeah.